in love, sex, marriage, and meditation. Meditation is the missing dimension between the triangle of love, sex, and marriage. Why my so much emphasis is on meditation or have a meditative way of life, it needs to understand. Meditation does not mean meditation the form changes in everything that you do. Meditation does not mean sitting down and meditating. You can walk in a meditative way, you can eat food in a meditative way, you can cook, you can walk, talk, everything that you do. Where there is awareness, it becomes the meditative way. It's a systematic way. Now, in the first place, this sex energy that is stored at the base center is known as Kundalini. It is in the form of a coiled snake that is resting or asleep. It has to be awakened. It is a two-mouth snake that can move in either direction, either upward or downward. Usually when we enter into male-female relation, in the absence of awareness, it naturally tends to move downwards. Its direction has to change and that is the entire process that requires awareness. When I said this energy is stored at the base center, that is the resting place for this. And in the story of Krishna, Krishna does not represent a person. You have a form, form is visible to everyone, but that which is not visible to anyone is your understanding. Understanding is, is an aspect of consciousness when it descends at the level of intellect and mind it attains a form. Consciousness can be considered as a thought that is coming to the mind of an architect. Only he has a vision, something, a structure. Nobody knows that. Until he brings it down at different levels. Certain people, a draftsman, can understand it at the level of draft. But when a practical model of that thought is converted into the form of building and is put for display, then others can see that this is the structure. And then the whole process begins. So this energy is stored in that form. The architect is a man of awareness. So Krishna represents awareness a higher awareness, a meditative awareness. Now this snake is in a sleep form. When someone has gotten into that kind of sleep, you have to make a lot of efforts to awaken this. It is not an ordinary sleep. This is not what in yoga called tandra. A little noise, and you weak. A little flick of the finger and you weak. This is an unconscious sleep. Sex remains in an unconscious sleep until it is shaken to its very roots. And who can do it? Only a man of awareness. That is why the emphasis is on this missing dimension which is meditation into sex. When this dimension is added to sex, the act of sex, the whole science and the art of sex, it is a composite discipline that incorporates both art and science. Science is the methodology out of which what science entire discipline, the Kama Sutra came, and art, it has a delicate aspect, very delicate. You have to understand it 
delicately go into it very delicately only then it becomes a composite art and science both so only a man of awareness can shake in this and this is shown in this story with krishna entering into fight with the snake king who is coiled and resting this energy is always at rest rest means it is cold it is frozen when somebody is resting all the energies are dormant the nothing but the moment you try to awaken a waking person he immediately gets angry and enters into a fight no i do not want to get up now it's too early to wake up i will wake up on my own and things like these happens that we face on a day to day basis you set an alarm to wake up at a particular time when alarm rings you immediately say that let me take another five and five becomes 10 and 10 becomes 20 then you realize that it is almost nick of the time and you has to rush up for all the books that you have to finish so it is only consciousness that can awaken that dormant energy and if it does not happen many people enter into the act of sex and find themselves the energy begins to go down and when the problems arise divorce is the ultimate to me if we can include or add this missing dimension of meditation or awareness of consciousness into it it will attain a new dimension now when i said krishna told the snake after the fight when the serpent king was finally defeated and subdued and then at the pleading of their of his wives he instructs him to go to another place but where can the sex energy go it has to travel it has to it there is a path for it to travel and according to yoga this path is known as the entire journey of the kundalini energy in this spinal cord there are three nerves one in the middle nerve the middle in the center and two on the either side of this the middle one is known as by a different name and then the other two in the medical science are known as parasympathetic and metasympathetic nerve or the sun nerve and the moon nerve when this energy is invoked through the moon nerve there is calmness when it is invoked through the sun energy sun nerve then it's altogether the opposite when it is properly awakened with consciousness it is the moon energy moon nerve begins to function and that is where the consciousness the meditative element has come and its upward journey begins so first it melts then it moves from the earth center it goes through the all the various elements the earth the fire the water the ether and finally it attains goes beyond the physical elements because human body is composed of these elements irrespective of your religious upbringing every human being is composed of the earth that is the earth elements that's why after cremation the body merges into the earth element water human body is composed of two third of the water is a water element fire is the next element and fire when you eat food the digestive fire when juices are released the digestive power comes to function and that digestive energy helps to assimilate the food into its various components and energy is disseminated into various parts of the body then the ether the space 
the space so on and so forth all the five elements when you transcend these five elements you enter into the realm which is beyond the known so when it is krishna said you move from here because your presence is creating anger when you wake up sleeping person who has gone to sleep late he had a late outing and he comes back to sleep late and you are trying to wake him up what happens anger comes in anger is the first thing that comes in but in case of marriage first anger comes in anger is a way to protect itself and when sex remains unfulfilled many other things breeds in the unfulfilled sex brings jealousy and if the other person is blissful then hatred comes in hatred and all these things comes in the energy needs to be awakened and meditatively allow its upward trend when krishna said you have to go to the island in the middle of the ocean that island represents what does that island means it is a heart center heart center is when the vertical and the horizontal axis intersect one another the horizontal axis moving from left to right is known as the time it is the realm of the world it represents time and the vertical realm vertical vertical axis y that moves from below to the higher this this represents the energy that begins to move where time and the energy intersect one another that is the island where sex energy has to move and when it move reaches there it is no more sex its place of expression has become different it uh, exhibits it manifests itself from a different source then it is known as love and that is where the heart center is involved so in order to pursue this path of transcendence of sex energy through love and beyond love love is the one that you have known love is not a relationship it is a way to relate when you can you learn to relate to another human being or when you learn to relate to sentient and insentient things sensitivity comes into you you can now relate to the plants the rivers the mountains and you can establish a communion between these then you can understand your own emotions you can understand your own functionings and this is how these mystics and the masters by exploring by going into their own inner self have been able to explore many things when nanak says that going to the river holy river ganges which hindus do and he says it is said that by taking a dip into the holy river all the sins are washed now the argument the point is when you enter into the river it is only the physical body is immersed into the water and the physical body is simply an instrument and that which guides the physical body the action the organs of actions and perception is your understanding and how can you dip your understanding into the river holy river and unless and until that understanding changes no sins can be washed it is only when the understanding changes that is a kind of a holy bath your understanding has changed through meditation you have taken a holy bath now all the sins misdemeanors your old ways and means will begin to disappear your life enters into a new dimension this is important so here the so called religions that have only divided humanity into various sects 
and many kind of jihads and things comes to an end. And it is very important to understand when Krishna says to Arjun, you abandon all the religion of the body, mind and intellect and come to me and me and be established in your essential nature. What is your essential religion? What is the essential religion of soul? What is the essential religion of water, fire? Jesus says, I am the saltishness in soul. I am that quality that makes the soul, gives the soul the very essence that it is soul. Water has the quality that it can moisten anything. That is its essential nature. It is not a Hindu religion, not a Muslim or Jews or Christian religion. Fire has a capacity to burn anything that comes in itself except it, except itself. Fire does not burn itself, but it burns everything that comes into existence. This is the essential religion. What is your nature? The nature of human being is bliss. This is where Shankar, when he says, I am gathering the gems from the depth of the ocean and bringing them, weaving them into a garland, so that uh, into a rosary, so that you can use that for various purposes. Very important aspect. The Shankar says when he was, he encountered this sage, Govindapad Acharya while wandering in the mountains at Himalayan range. He asked, who are you? He said, I am neither the body nor the mind nor intellect nor relation nor this nor that. My essential form is Chid Anand. Chid means, Chid means consciousness, that which is truth. The Chid Anand means truth awareness and bliss. My nature is bliss. I am made out of the stuff that is called bliss, harmony and oneness. That is what everyone seeks, bliss in this form or that. Nothing else do we see. Bliss is our nature. And the moment you attain to that nature and you realize that my religion is bliss, my religion is eternal happiness. Then you become, you go beyond the body, mind and intellect and you attain to the status of eternity. You are never born, never died. Bliss is never born, never dies. Your body comes into existence with an interaction of ovum and sperm. But you are not the body, you are not the mind, you are not the intellect. Instead, you are beyond all that. That the thread that weaves the body, mind and intellect via meditation or awareness, this is your bliss nature. When I had asked my grandmother, what is my religion? I am born in a Hindu family brought up and grew up in a Sufi environment. She could have said very easily that you are born in a Hindu family, so of course your religion is Hinduism and Hinduism, Hinduism is the oldest religion. But bliss, your essential nature is even older than Hinduism, older than the oldest religion on earth. Then. Nanak says, Christian says that all those religions are old and outdated. Just as a computer, the older model becomes outdated and you look for new specs in a computer. So Christianity is the newest religion with new specs, new RAM and new hard drive with all kind of and speed and everything. But this is not the religion that you come with. When she told me your religion is the same as that of God, she did not give a ready-made answer. You have to discover that yourself when I further inquired about what is the religion of God. At the age of 10, this 
thought or sanskars was instilled into me. The journey begins. I try to explore that my essential nature is bliss, harmony, oneness and that is what I have to seek in every action, every thought and everything that I do. So when you understand this, you f can learn from everything. You can use electricity without saying that it has been discovered by a Christian scientist. How can I use it because I am a Hindu practitioner or I am a Christian practitioner? No, nobody says like that. Nobody says that I will not use computer because it has been developed by a Jew. We use all these things because these are necessary for the sustenance and continuation of life along the path. In the same way, the various religions, various parables, the techniques, are essential to attain to that, attain to that blissful nature that is your essence. And the moment you attain to that, you begin to dwell in that religion, in that region, in that space, which is known as Kalb or the heart space or the Hridpratma Chakra or the heart center where time and eternity intersect one another. This is the moment of great joy. When you transcend time, you become eternal. When your energy begins to move forward, you attain once again your eternal nature. You establish into your essential nature. My essential nature is first to seek bliss within me, seek harmony within me, seek harmony between my thoughts, actions and perceptions. And then when I have attained to this within me, then it must manifest through each of my actions, thoughts, and all that comes out of me. This is the way it has to happen. And when this begins to happen, you have understood that meditation is the missing dimension. Then you can find the ways and means how to enter into the act of sex. That is the entire science of Tantra. Tantra does not mean moving from one partner to the other and you want to fruition through this new. You can use one and through that and can remain within the discipline of marriage, institution of marriage, although the word institution is wrong. But still for convenience we can use that. You can remain within that male-female relation and even if it is not then you can enter into your past relations, rec recapitulate. Even in the past lives, you may have had the experience and meditatively one can enter into those and experience the moment of bliss if it is not happening through the physical act. But once you and begin to enter into it meditatively, the process is process begins and it is not far when you will begin to experience a different kind of understanding, a different kind of way to relate and the ultimately the bliss as the outcome.